I'm Grant Mitchell. Hit first, ask questions later, trick me like dirt. Don't care about anybody else but myself. But that's what people think of me, innit? That's what you and everybody expects from me. So why shout about it when I live up to it? I ain't talking about anybody else. I'm talking about Kathy. Kathy, Sharon, Tiffany. What's the difference? Well, maybe none to you. I can't believe you're enough of a scumbag just to do this to get back at me. I mean, if you actually felt safe for Kathy, it might be bad, but you didn't, did you? You just used her to get back at me for Sharon. So I used her, big deal. And you don't think that's sick? Hold on a minute. Uh, I'm the psycho, but you're the bloke with a gun threatening to shoot people. Not people, Grant. You. Come on in. Well, let's have it, Phil. What's the matter? Your bottle going? your eye holes, Philip. It don't suit you. You've ruined my whole life. Ruined the last chance for me to be with my son out of spite. Yeah, you know something? It was hardly worth the wait. Stop the car. Get stuck. I said stop the car! Bill! Thanks for hanging on. Like I said, I've... We've got a little announcement to make. I've waited a long time for this. I never thought it would happen. I still can't believe it. I've not loved many things in my life. I didn't know how to, I suppose. But, well, I should be saying this to you. I'm just so... Well, help me out. Grant. What we're trying to Grant. say is... Don't. I can't. I'm 
so sorry. Sharon, what's going on? Just go back inside. Look, it's all right. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. I'm leaving, Grant. Leaving? Why? It wasn't real. Any of it. What do you mean it wasn't real? I lied about everything. I wanted to humiliate you in there like you did to me, remember? I wanted you to feel what I felt. To hurt you, make you understand what you'd done. But I love you. Have you any idea how much damage you did? You can't take that hurt away, ever. I, I can, look. It'll be all right. Just come back inside. Don't you remember what you did, the things you said? You treated me like I was a whore. Look, we can work it out, talk it over. You offered me to your friends. There's no way back, Grant. There never was. I was giving up everything. That was what tonight was about. No. Tonight was to pay you back. To tell everyone in that pub what you did. Revenge. Is that what this is about? You hated me that much. I thought I did. Maybe if I'd hated you enough, I could have gone through with it. All right, you made your point. I can even understand why. But it still isn't too late. We can work it no, out. Just give it time. No. I love you. I love you too. Where will you go? <coughs> so, we uh, skirted around the houses enough here. Yeah? Well, all the way here, we did a party this trail. Chelsea winning the Premiership, the price of petrol. What we haven't talked about is the day you went. Yeah, well, that's um, all water under the bridge, isn't it? Under the dashboard, as I remember. Look, it's history. Best left there. Are you sure about that? Or are you just going through the motions to get this thing done with Sam? Give me if I am. It's all right with me. As long as I know where I stand, that's all. What happened in the past? I'm over it. We're good. Sorry for trying to shoot you. Sorry for trying to drown you. Families, eh? There's nothing like them, is there? It's women, isn't it? One sure way to come between two blokes and that's to stick a bird in the middle. Talking of birds, it's Carla. She tastes the other one. That is not funny. How's your love life, anyway? Well, I've been banged up, and I. <laughs> I think about her sometimes. Who? Oh. Sharon. I wonder what she's doing now. Don't know. She'd be long gone from here by now, I suppose. Well, the last I heard, she fell out of her old man and moved away again. That was a bit weird, wasn't it? Him turning up after all those years. Oh, who's talking? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not dead, am I? Yeah, well, you ain't been to see Johnny Allen yet, have you? Oh, come on, bruv. How many Asian villains have we had to deal with over the years, huh? Quite a few. Exactly. They don't like us because they can't scare us off. If they want to get rid of us, they have to take off their camel hair overcoats and roll their sleeves up. Yeah, well, they reckon it used to be a vicious kid. Johnny won't take kindly to being warned off, not by anybody. They're not warning him off. They're just letting him know that they're here. Calm things down a bit. Grant Mitchell, the diplomat, that'll be interesting. So, how long are they staying? I'm not sure. Well, it would be nice to know, seeing this is my house. Oh, at least until Sam's out of prison. Let's hope she don't get 20 years. Where is it? Over there. What about a bloke with no neck? What's that game, sir? Remember, stand still and look hard.
Who the hell are you? I'm Phil Mitchell. This is my brother, Grant. The Mitchell boys. Oh, we met once. Yeah. I know your dad. You were kids then. We grew. So I see. So what can I do for you, lads? We were passing. We thought we'd drop in and say hello. Now that's very civil. That's the way we were brought up. Are you here to threaten me, Philip? Have I got a reason? Oh, you tell me. Look, we stop messing around. You go near our mum again, old man, and you'll be eating soup through a straw. <laughs> I love it. Good thug, bad thug, brilliant. Did you hear what I said? I just heard a lot of noise. We're here to let you know we're around. Any problem you got with our mum, you knack up with us. And if there's a way of resolving this, then let's do it. And if there isn't? Then my brother will be the least of your problems. I'm going to raise you 500. Five hundred. I'm playing. Just a quick look now. Gambling is not healthy. <laughs> They're putting down thousands. It's like a casino up there. Aren't you even a little bit curious? Huh? Uh, uh, maybe just a little. <laughs> Excuse me, it's private up there. Carly, you couldn't look after the bar for a minute for me, please. I'm going to raise you a thousand. I'll re raise you two thousand. couldn't go through with it. Say you did nothing. I was going to. But when I got there, I just... Well, what did your mum say? <laughs> you think I told her? What? You kidding? That really would kill her. And at least it keeps her off my back, you know? Buys me some time. Well, how long you keep the lie going for? Well, shouldn't be that hard. I just have to say I'm going. She doesn't need to know where I actually go, does she? Uh, oh. <laughs> where is everyone? Where's Shirley? Upstairs. Oh, is she? I'm going to raise you another two grand. You feeling the heat? I'm pleasantly warm. <laughs> what the hell? You only live once. All in. Is that our money? It's fine, Peggy. But it's mine. Too late, Peggy. The money's on the table. You gotta let it ride. Four jacks. Always bet on the plant. It's a sort of 
Lifetime Achievement Award. And I'd like to present it jointly tonight to my very good friend here, Patricia Evans. Along with a man who's always good for a laugh and a joke, my very special husband, Mr. Frank Butcher. And it's for a lifetime of irresponsibility, deceit, and plain, old-fashioned wickedness. And before you're all wondering, have I gone start staring mad, there's something I'd like to read out to you. It's from Frank here, and it's to me. He doesn't very often write to me, so this came as a bit of a surprise. Peggy, it really oh, there he goes again, trying to spoil my big moment. You're just going to have to hold your horses, sweetheart. My dear, darling Peggy, I've been racking my brain to think of a good way of saying this. But the truth is, there is no good way. It breaks my heart to say it, but I'm leaving you. Perhaps there's a small part of you that is aware that no matter how hard I've tried, I've never quite been able to stop myself loving Pat. I fell in love with her the day I met her, and the feelings have never gone away. I might have learned to live with that if it weren't for the fact that she feels the same way about me. <laughs> We've both of us struggled long and hard to hide these feelings and pretend they weren't there. But when the four of us went on holiday with Terry and Irene to Spain. Pat and I found ourselves unable to pretend any longer. These last few weeks have been pure torture for us both. Neither you nor Roy deserve this. You are both fine people. And I pray that in time, you will find it in your hearts to forgive us for the pain that we have caused. By the time you read this, we will both be long gone. With great affection, Frank. So, why they're still here is a bit of a mystery. But one thing I've learned since I've been married to Mr. Butcher is never underestimate his capacity to make a cock up of things. Apologies to all of you who've already received the invitations to the renewal of our wedding vows. No doubt there'll be collector's items soon. So, all it remains for me is to present the prizes. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Hope you all enjoyed the fireworks. Good night. Well, you could have dressed up a little bit, made some sort of an effort. That's what ordinary people do. No, that is what people do. And I ain't having pictures of you on my arm looking like a tramp. Well, what do you mean to do about it? Bradley. Jacket. What? Well, I need to see if it fits. I'm not marrying him like that, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Bradley, just take your jacket off. We're running out of time. <sighs> what, do you want my trousers as well? Yes, and your shirt and your tie, everything. Oh, surely you can keep his pants on. No, well, I ain't really got any on, so it's not like we can swap. Oh, dear. Uh, perhaps you'd like to use a different room? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. No, no, no. You three stay here. She just wants to get rid of us. If we go anywhere, they'll lock the doors. They won't let us back in. She's not dead. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> it would just be quicker if it's us two. I'll bring um, Sean's trousers back for you, Bradley. Oh, great. Great, so I can just stand her in my boxes, shall I? Well, you got your bits covered, didn't you? Oh, any bashful. Mm. There is an adjoining office through that door. Please don't touch anything. Well, apart from him. Mm. Come on, stud, let's get you fixed up. 
nice. It's not going to fit. Thank you. I'm the one that's grateful. Are you really going commando? Um, yes. What about you? Stockings and cami knickers. <coughs> Speak. Nope. You gotta marry me first. Uh. All right. Sneak preview, okay? Partying later, what do you think? It's all right. <laughs> Phil? Phil? Hi, Mum. What are you doing here? What do you think I'm doing? Wait for a number 13 bus. <sighs> It's on holiday. Well, Kathy got a message from Auntie Sal. I got the first plane back. You didn't have to do that. Oh, didn't I? I was allergic to these places anyway. Shut up. Have some grapes. <laughs> oh, they starve me in these places. Why do you think so many people die here? I'm not dying. I'm all right. Mm, of course not. Yeah. You just felt like having a new spleen, didn't you? I don't give you a new one, mate. They just take the old one out. Oh, what? You're walking around with a gaping hole in your gut. It's like an appendix. It don't do anything. It's just a sort of squishy thing. Ooh, don't talk about it. You're giving me the willies. All I'm saying is it's, it's nothing serious. And what's this about you, Ed? Doctor said you fell on it. Yeah, nice soft landing, eh? Mm, Want to be careful, though. Got it like a baby's, you have. So, you going to tell me what happened? I didn't sound to her. She said you had an accident. Yeah, that's right. I fell down a bit. What do you mean, you fell? Well, I was working late. I was tired. I got careless, I suppose. Careless? What did you do? Forget it was there? You know you could have been killed. Yeah, well, I weren't, was I? <sighs> Can't take my eyes off you, can I? Not for two minutes. Like a kid you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You tell him the truth, Phil. Well, why would I lie about a thing like that? Well, you weren't fighting or anything. No. All right. Well, I worry about you, that's all. Working on your own in that place. This never would have happened if Grant had been there. No. <clears throat> You're weak, aren't you? Yeah, I'm all right. There's nothing new to worry about. I'm just a bit tired, that's all. Well, you sleep then, darling. Get some rest. Yeah. yeah. I'll leave you for a bit. I can catch up on news with Kathy and Grant. Rest now. I'll be back later. Go on. Your public awaits. You know, the truth is, you love this place more than you love me. Go on, admit it. Admit it. Make you feel better, will it? Admit it. Yes, you're right. I do. Yeah. Let's see how you feel. When I do to you what you did to me, what? take away the most important thing Dad. in my life. Let's see how you feel when it burns to the ground. What are you doing? Stop oh, it! Beg. Stop it! No, I won't beg you. I won't. So, I'll just... You haven't got the nerve. Nah, nah, you haven't got the nerve. No, you haven't. You. No, you bloody man! What are you doing? You stop it! Get it. No! This is my party, kid. No!
Go and call the fire brigade. Go and call the fire brigade now! Go! 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 You know, it was what Aunt Sal's mistake. Hi, like Jay's girlfriend. Look at how he's always going on about. He's on the phone to her now. It's obvious. What are you talking about? He's in love with her, Abs. Jay's in love with Lola. I told Alex what you told me to say, that we need to sort this out, and so we are. We're going away, we're going to thresh it out, just the three of us, me, him and Amy. What, you, you're the one that said, if I've got a problem, I need to face it head on, and that's what I'm doing. And now it's your turn. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's time you told Charlie the truth. Look, we've been through yes, this. Yes, we have. Now it's time you and him did the same. Ronnie. Taking his time. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't mind watching Jenny. I'm just going to put Lexi's pajamas on if you don't mind. Hello, <sighs> Pops. It's me. Will you just, will you just call me back, all right? <sighs> One minute my day's going great, and the next minute I've got the carters turned up, mob ended at the door. Just calm down and tell me what. They're saying I've got something to do with Lucy's murder. What? Yeah, the front door was wide open. Anyone could have walked in. 
How are you feeling? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Tinny wants another DVD. Do you, do you want another painkiller? Stop fussing. Jay, Jay, put the kettle on with me, Billy. Just go with him. You look tired. Well, I don't know how. I've hardly lifted a finger for weeks. Look, Phil, just keep the doors locked, eh? It's better to be careful. Sharon, you're safe, all right? I promise you. Well, like I said, I'm fine. Just common sense. Well, just, just call me if you need anything, yeah? Why the hell would they accuse you of murdering Lucy? Well, answer the question. Right, right. The night she died, she caught me nicking fish from the chippy. And she threatened to tell Ian, so we had this blazing row. Well, I thought no one else knew, but then Lee Carter says that he see us arguing. Did he hear what the row was about? You sure? Yeah. I'm Positive. What did you tell him? I just made up some story about her giving me grief about having to wait for her chips. Did he believe you? Ain't much of a story, is it? I didn't have time to think, you know? Well, it's just your word against Lee's, isn't it? If you keep your mouth shut about the stolen fish, you've you got nothing to worry about. Or is there something else? Spit it out, will ya? I had a key. Tina's flat, a spare key. I, I had it from Butcher's joints. Don't tell her she was in there, please. Who were you? Billy, tell us the facts, come on! I was rigging the switchboard. I was running our lecky off of their meter. Tina caught me in there the other day red-handed. Now they all think that I was in the flat the night that Lucy died. Jay, let's uh, get lost for a minute, will you? Just do it. So what happened after the row? Nothing. He just took off. Billy, if you're hiding something, I need to know. You seriously asking me if I killed her? You said she threatened to go to Ian. Yes, but Phil... I know. I know how much you need that job. You seriously think I'd kill a young girl for a poxy job at a chippy? Come on, Phil. I know I've done a lot of bad things in my time, but I'm not a killer. God. What about Lee? Did he say? Did he say anything else before he left? I mean, do you think he would have gone straight to the hotel? I'm not sure. I've only just chucked him out, haven't I? Where are you going? To the Vic. See if I can't sort out your mess. You gonna wear this? Yeah, of course. Okay. Ronnie? You've got to see this. <laughs> Look at you. What is it? It's just pulled up. What has? A surprise from Phil. <laughs> well, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Money than sense. Oh, it's like that film, isn't it? What film? You know, the um, 
The one with two women. Oh, well, that narrows us down a bit. Pam and Louise. You're kidding, you know how that ended? Oh, just look at her. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Our cousin's a big softy, isn't he? <laughs> right. Let's get you wet. Like I said. Sharon? Yeah, I'm coming. So has this thing got sat now? No! So we can take a few detours then. Come on in. See you later. 